Hey everybody, it's Tracy Hamlin reminding you to join us every Monday night for an entire hour. We are chatting it up with some amazingly phenomenal recording artists that you need to know about, as well as some incredible and inspiring small business owners from my area that you need to know about. So join us for an entire hour every Monday night. Leave a comment on my social media. Let me know who you've enjoyed and who we need to have on the Tracy Hamlin Show. See you on Mondays and ooches of smooches. We're going to kick things off with an amazing small business owner who is an author. She's the first owner of a hair care vending machine at BWI Airport, and she owns a fabulous day spa in Upper Co, Maryland. Hello, Cindy. How are you? And welcome. You're Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. So it's a pleasure. I'm I'm absolutely, I, I just absolutely love that you wear many hats as a small business owner. So what was your profession before you started 
your own business? I was actually a registered nurse for 13 years. Mm -hmm. And um, it was always my desire to go into the beauty business. So I left nursing after 13 years to go into what I truly, truly, truly love, which was helping beautify women from the inside out. So 13 years as a nurse. So let's, you know, so you're, you're wearing all these hats. First, let's chat about your hair care products. Tell us the name of your hair care products and what the motivation was for starting your hair care. Absolutely. And I actually have one of them here. It's called Diva by Cindy. Um, I had my chemistry teacher um, in Ghana, West Africa, teach me how to make nail polish and lipstick because I was failing his class. And Ghana is where you're originally from. Ghana is where I was born. Yes. Ghana is where I was born, where I'm originally from. And um, he inspired me. He uh, presented me as a cosmetologist and a chemist. And I thought, wow, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, my parents wanted me to become a doctor, to go into the medical field. So I went and became a nurse, got my bachelor's. And mm -hmm. after 13 years of feeling disillusioned and unfulfilled, I left nursing to pursue my passion. 15 years. So did your profession as a nurse prepare you? How did it prepare you? To Absolutely. Become nursing gave me the foundation for customer service, for organization, for prioritizing. Um, and even now, even in my business, I mean, if you're not hemorrhaging to death, I'm not going to pay attention to it. You know, you have to prioritize what's important and what's not. So nursing gave me great foundation and um, it really, 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 really has been helpful because I've gone from health care to hair care to healing. And, you know, it's like full circle back to taking care of people. That is wonderful. So I'm sure the chemistry piece of becoming a nurse helped you, you know, with um, creating your hair care products as well. Absolutely. We started with detangling products and helping stop shedding and breakage of hair and definitely knowing the ingredient part from chemistry helped. Mm -hmm. yes. So what was the inspiration behind the name of your business? Diva stands for divine inspired virtuous and anointed. Mm -hmm. My gifting is in the prophetic and it's the divine realization that, you know, you have come to full circle or come to fruition or knowledge of who you are. A diva is not a bratty brat woman that throws a temper tantrum. She carries herself. She desires beauty, excellence, and elegance in all she wants and desires. But she's also inspired and an inspiration to many. So that's what I believe that a, a diva is. And that's why the name came about. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. A lot of times people think the name Diva has a negative connotation, but in my eyes and my book, it absolutely does not. So I love that. I love the acronym. So how long did it take you from deciding to start your own business to actually launching? Well, I had the rumblings and anxiety and just feeling une uh, just unsettled and unhappy in my profession. It had been from the moment I started nursing. Mm -hmm. When I went to nursing school in 1989, I knew that I didn't belong there. But it's like a woman who steps into, uh, uh, gets on the aisle to get married and steps into a marriage and knows it's not meant for her and she does it anyway. Yes. And then years later, she realizes that, oh, my God, I've been in this too long. Now I need to set myself free. So I knew going in, it wasn't what I was called to do. So yes. it was from the moment I set foot there. It took 13 years for me to free myself. Oh, my goodness. So did you yeah. just walk away? Did you say, I'm no, going to I'm driving. Yep. I got, I, I'm going into work. I work weekend option. They paid us. 36 hours to work, work two 24 hour days, two 12 hour shifts. So 24 hours, instead of, um, you know, getting paid for 24, we got paid 36 hours. So that was great, you know, but I hated it so much that I would be driving in and crying. I hate this. I hate this. Get me out. And I'm sure a lot of your audience members can relate to hating something and not being happy in that profession, but doing it because what it pays the bills and not knowing anything else. So I made a promise. I said, God, show me what I need to do. 
and I heard a sermon that came on the radio and this, the, the pastor said, change your focus and change your future. And I said, okay, I know I got to change my focus, but Lord, when I go in, give me a sign. If somebody upsets me, that's it. I got in, one of the doctors upset me and that was my sign. That was, I just quit. I did not think it over. I had thought it over enough. 13 years was enough. I had had enough. Cindy, your story is so inspiring. We're going to take a short break and we will be right back with Cindy Kalia and we're going to hear all about the Diva Day Spa. We'll be right back on the Tracy Hillman Show. jazz lover? If so, have we got something special for you. Presenting Tracy Hamlin's Sweet Jazz Concerts. The first concert of 2022 is Sunday, May 1st with saxophonist Paula Atherton and the songstress herself, Tracy Hamlin, at the River Creek Country Club in Leesburg, Virginia. Sunday, May 1st at 4 p.m. For more information and tickets, visit www.sweetjazzconcerts.com. Sponsored by the Bank of Clark.
Hamlin Show. We are here with Cindy Tawia, and I can't wait to talk about your day spa that I had the wonderful opportunity to come by and visit last week. So tell us all about your spa, the name of your spa, where it's located. First of all, thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. That was so awesome, and I'm truly grateful. It's the most amazing time. <laughs> Thank you. It's called the Diva Day Spa. We're located in Upper Co, Maryland. Our address is 15212 Hanover Pike. And we are in Baltimore County, going up towards York, Pennsylvania. And that's where we're set. So we have a holistic healing day spa. Yeah, it was very easy to get to. And I walked in feeling a little tense from my week. And I had a massage a one hour massage. I also had a facial. I had foot reflexology. I had amazing snacks. We had wine and great conversation. And I just love that your price points are very affordable. And it was such a quality day spent. So thank you. If so, if any of you out there are thinking about going to a spa, getting a massage and a facial, and you just need some me time, you need to go find Diva by Cindy, because it is absolutely amazing. I had the oh, thank so you. So with you, so you have hair care products, and you also have a day spa. How are you balancing the two? Uh, I go back to the priorities. Uh, mm -hmm. My products are actually on autopilot as far as distribution, mm -hmm. because we've been doing this since two thousand and seven. So I have um, a vending machine at BWI that gets stocked and of course it dispenses the product so it's easy i have another one in for belvoir uh, which is franchised so that's also taken care of and then as far as distribution once the stores order the products we ship it to them and then they just you know basically do what they're supposed to. So we handle the marketing and, you know, the social media and all that other stuff and then the PR and stuff. So it's very easy. It's the day spa, which needs a little bit more attention because it requires me to be there doing my services that I offer with healing and prophetic counseling and then making sure that the staff who work with me are also you know, executing and performing their um, duties. So that's two years old. It's a brand new baby and he needs nurturing. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, I spend more of my time. And that's my heart. That's well, my heart. you are the first owner of a hair care vending machine and, and your machine is in the airport. Tell us about how that came to be because you don't see that. I mean, the only other airport vending machines I've seen was Apple and Kylie Jenner. <laughs> so... How did, how did that? Did we, you... we actually got there at BWI before Kylie Jenner. <laughs> wow. And we had a retail storefront at mm -hmm. BWI Airport. Uh, we <laughs> sold our products from there. We were actually the first natural hair care brand, Black-owned hair care brand, to be in a major airport. And it was just an awesome, awesome year that we had there. Um, but we had our unit reclaimed, which in leasing terms or commercial leasing terms means the landlord can take back that space at any time and offer it to another um, vendor or another company. So our unit was taken from us. Um, I surrendered it. I just didn't see the reason in fighting it because I prayed, I said, God, what do I, what should I do? And although I was disappointed, I let go. I released, I said, okay, you want your space back, you can have it. And it was given to another larger cosmetics company. So um, that minute, being said, no control or power, they just at any given time could come and say- At any know. given time, they can reclaim the unit. Yes. And that was something that, you know, I wasn't expecting. It kind of came out of the blue, um, but I let everybody go. I was sitting there in a moment of just quiet silence, you know, you can't hear God if you have confusion and noise around you. So in a moment of silent meditation, I prayed and I said, God, why'd you put me in and take me out? And I heard automatic, automatic, and I had a vision of a vending machine. So I created the machine, put my PowerPoint presentation together, went back to the airport, presented it, and launched it there. And that's how it happened. So I just had to pivot my business. Well, and I, I love that you were able to pivot and be that flexible and even to have the courage and the wherewithal 
to go and present such a unique and, and amazing idea. So kudos to you. That is amazing. Thanks. So are there any other, between having your hair care products and having a day spa, any other challenges that you had to encounter? You know, I've heard no a lot. You mm -hmm. know, being in the beauty business, mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of no's. I've heard a lot of people who did not believe in me. Even mm -hmm. before I had my day spa, we actually owned the commercial location. And my first location, nobody would even lease to me. Now people are chasing me down to give me money. Every time I turn around, there's some finance company offering me money. And I'm like, I don't want it. I don't want your money now. You didn't want to give it to me when I needed a loan to start the business, but now you want to give it to me. Go give it to someone else that needs it. Mm -hmm. You know, someone else that's starting. So I've had a lot of no's and mm. unbelief or disbelief, but I'm in a place now where I don't feel the need to chase it. I'm like, God, if it's mine, you're going to bring it to me. I don't need to go and pursue it. And, but, but, you know, you touched on the whole perseverance. I mean, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in your dream and just not allow no to stop you. That's so right. what, nuggets of information of inspiration could you share for any aspiring small business owners absolutely i will give them my five or actually six p's mm -hmm. or prayer mm -hmm. passion love what you do mm -hmm. perseverance mm -hmm. persistence even when they are saying no persist until you succeed absolutely positivity mm-hmm and presence. You can't say you want to make six figures or you want to earn a certain amount and not be there, not be present. You have to be present. You're present right now and we're having this beautiful conversation. So you're here and you're doing what's called and I'm just urging them to do the same. Don't say you want to do it and then go sit somewhere and say, oh, it'll be done or an autopilot. And when you say you want to do something, be a person of action because if not, your dream is only a wish. Well, you dropped some amazing nuggets today. Thank you so much. So again, where can people find your hair products and where can people find your spa? They can find the products. If they go on divabycindy.com, www.divabycindy.com, you can find location. You can order online. Uh, we'll get it shipped to you. And the Diva Day Spa, you can actually call 410-429-4729. Or log on to divadayspamd.com. And once you Google Diva Day Spa MD, you'll, you'll find us. Or Diva by Sin, you'll, you'll be able to connect with us. And we'd love to take care of you. Yeah, and what I loved, your site is so user-friendly. So I was able to just go online and schedule everything that I wanted. And I love just no stress. And then I came to your beautiful, you know, your, your, um, your space is so beautiful, pink and white and gold. And I'm a girly girl. So <laughs> pink. So, so, I we had a great time. Oh and yeah. I, I literally just floated out of there. Not to mention I was there for four hours. <laughs> so it was, I love an experience and it was an experience. So I just thank you so much for all that you're doing to thank give you. to the community. And I just thank want to thank you. you for sharing your journey and your story with us today. And I wish you much success. And I'll be back thank very, very soon. To thank see you. you. Thank you so much for having me on your show and yes. for sharing me with your listeners and your audience. Yes, and I will be back to see you very soon. So thank you so much, Cindy, for joining us. And we're going to take a break, a short pause for the cause. We'll be back with bass guitarist extraordinaire, Sean Michael Ray. We'll be right back. Thank you, Cindy.
I'm Charles Meriday, and I'm in the restaurant business. In my 20 years as a chef and restaurant owner, I've been able to work and eat in some of the great kitchens around the globe. There's a whole side of the restaurant that most people will never get to see. So now, I want to take you to the back of the house, into kitchens of some of the best chefs in the world. Along the way, I'll share some of my own tips and recipes, so you can cook like a pro too. So join me in the back of the house for a whole new perspective on cooking and food. Every great song has its own kind of vibe, just like the streets they come from. Now, all that music from across America will go head to head on one stage. Every state and territory will compete live for your votes. In the biggest televised music event you've ever seen, America's next great hit could come from your hometown. Let's go! American Song Contest premieres live March 21st on NBC. Are you a jazz lover? If so, have we got something special for you. Presenting Tracy Hamlin's Sweet Jazz Concerts. The first concert of 2022 is Sunday, May 1st, with saxophonist Paula Atherton and the songstress herself, Tracy Hamlin, at the River Creek Country Club in Leesburg, Virginia. Sunday, May 1st at 4 p.m. For more information and tickets, visit www.sweetjazzconcerts.com. Sponsored by the Bank of Clark. Are you ready? Welcome back to the Tracy Hamlin Show. Our next guest is an amazing musician and bass guitarist extraordinaire. He's played with so many amazing talents, including Maxwell and Jonathan Butler, just to name a few. 
Welcome to the show, Sean Michael Ray. How are you? Hey, Tracy. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me on. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. So, Sean, let's start by first telling the viewers where you're from. I am born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama. Birmingham, Alabama. Lots of my family are there, including <laughs> you. So, yeah, besides... you're, you're an honorary Birmingham, Alabama, <laughs> Alabama. Yeah. Right. So, Sean, besides the bass, do you play any other instruments? Uh, no, I started out on trombone in elementary school, then uh, mm -hmm. switched over to bass at about age 15. Oh, okay. So, how? So, you started playing bass when you were 15. Gotcha. So, yes. what led you on the path to wanting to become a musician? Uh, I don't know. I think it chose me. Uh, my mom is a minister of music, so I grew mm -hmm. up playing with her in church. Grandma played piano. Uh, mm -hmm. Dad was a bass player. Oh, so, so it's just in you, in your yeah, DNA. Yeah, my uncles had all of these albums around the house, so I grew mm -hmm. up listening to all kinds of stuff by virtue of what they were playing. You know, Led Zeppelin, the Electric Light Orchestra, Mm -hmm. um, Steel Pulse on the reggae side, mm -hmm. and then they played all the R and B Steel stuff Pulse. too, Earth, One, and Fire, right. and the Isley Brothers, and all that stuff. And then I was in church all the time, so I had all that gospel background as well. So I just mm -hmm. uh, listened to a little bit of everything. So I think it was always the desire there from um, mm -hmm. just being excited about listening to all that stuff. So I, I, as I mentioned, you've toured with Maxwell and Jonathan Butler. Who are some of the other artists that you have worked with? Well, I haven't actually toured with Jonathan oh. Butler. I did Performed. an album called Gospel Goes Classical with, along with him and uh, Juanita Bynum. And actually, oh. Ruben okay. Stutter was on that album as well, but his record From company Birmingham. did mm -hmm. not allow him to make the record. So. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, I got a chance to tour with Maxwell in 2008. You know, he had a seven-year hiatus. And when he came mm -hmm. back, I was able to do that tour. Um, probably the tour that I'm most noted for was Dion Ferris. And that was in the mid-90s, 93, 94. Uh, probably... Arrested Development. Dion Ferris from Arrested Development. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. okay, but... But you still do spot dates with a lot of different artists, not necessarily tours, but spot dates. Yeah, like the economy has changed. So unless you're with a really big artist, like nobody really stays out for a long time unless you like with one of the majors. Um, with a lot of the smooth jazz artists, it's just like wherever the date is, you go there, do it and right. you come home. And then you come home. Look, I just did that over the weekend. <laughs> so um, let's go back and talk about Maxwell, because, you know, I always say to folks, um, anybody who wants to be in this business, you can you can't be getting ready. You have to be ready. So I know when Maxwell called you to go on that tour, was it two or three days that you had to prepare to go on the road for a while? Uh, there was no time. I so got was, the call on a Thursday night and I had to be in Brooklyn the next day for a rehearsal. So you guys hear this? So, but he was ready because I remember just like that, you were like, okay, I got to make sure my bills and my clothes. <laughs> and, and then you had had other gigs scheduled, but you were ready to go. So you had one day, so you had no time to learn the material. Yeah. Um, they were like, well, man, don't worry about it. Just come on up and, you know, just uh, learn a couple of songs just so you can hear what you can do. And, and then after we get out of rehearsal, man, you can shed it in the hotel at night. So I was I was behind the eight ball, but uh, I made mm -hmm. it happen. Yeah. And I mean, in, in the industry that we're in, folks have no idea the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. I mean, it just happened to me last week with just, you know, working with folks and they give you all of this music at the last minute. Yep. Like we're machines, but then, <laughs> you know, because we're consummate professionals, we rise to the occasion but it's a lot of work, it you is. know, it is. Yeah. And then when it's all over, you just kind of crash and burn from being <laughs> on. So totally, totally get that. So um, when, so you said Led Zeppelin was some, one of your influences. And I know of course, Birdie White from Earth, Wind and Fire. Oh, absolutely. Any absolutely. genre that you gravitate towards? You say, is there a particular genre that I gravitate to? Yes. 
that would be your favorite or is it just pieces from all of them? Uh, I mean, funky stuff is always like my favorite stuff. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I have a rock band called 35 Human as well. So I, I love still... them and want to have you guys back on the show. But I wanted to get you in here first, but definitely because <laughs> you don't see a lot of black rock bands and you guys are awesome. But I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we would love to be on the show as well. Yeah, so I mean, I still, I still love that stuff too. You know, I grew up listening to Journey and mm -hmm. all those rock bands from from the uh, early '80s. I, I really love that stuff. And John Waite was another person I, that I toured with. I was right, in his I band for um, four years. For people that don't know who he is, he's like a, a pop rock '80s icon. Missing mm -hmm. You was like his number one hit. Mm -hmm. And so, in playing with him, we did a tour with Kansas and sticks and a lot of those are when we would play shows a lot of those artists that i admired growing up we were playing shows with them rick springfield and and people like that so that was a really cool situation for me a lot of times i was the only black person in the building <laughs> so it's a, a bit of a uh a total turnaround from the stuff people normally see me doing mm -hmm. but, but i'm know, always comfortable in both in both sides of that. Yeah, and I mean, you do all the genres so well. I tell folks all the time that it is so important to listen to multiple genres because every genre lends itself to teaching you different characteristics about you and your instrument, you exactly. know? So now what? one of the things that I love about you, Sean, is when you're performing, you're animated, you bring such a great vibe with your playing uh, you. and then you're not just standing there looking at the floor. So it's great <laughs> to be able to get energy from you. You know, I mean, it's true. I mean, you, you go out, you've seen other people on the road, other musicians, and it's just, it's great to be able to, when I'm on stage with you, to be able to look and get a smile. And it's so interesting because I was thinking the song that I sang earlier today, Good Morning Heartache. Oh yeah. You have a face on that. <laughs> yeah. That was a fun song. Incredible arrangement, too. Phil, Mr. Look, Mr. Phil Davis, he's oh, absolutely yeah. amazing. <laughs> you know, unbelievable. So you, I was so glad when you started recording your solo projects, because with all of that amazing flavor that you have on the bass, I was like, we need a Shawn Michael Ray record. So <laughs> how many records have you um, released, solo projects? Uh, there's two. There's uh, Overdue, which was released in 2013. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, The Rebirth, which was released in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on another one right now, which is going to be... I was going to ask. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like going to be a tribute to some of my favorite songs. It's like a cover record uh, mm -hmm. called Influences. That's what the name of the record will be. Ooh, and, uh, and I'm kind of gravitating away from the instrumental thing. Like, I want to go in more of a vocal direction because the music that influenced me the most was like, you know, Gino Vanelli, Earth, Wind and Fire. Like I like, okay. like I love lyrics. I love vocals. I mean, and don't yeah. get me wrong. I still love instrumental music too, but, but yeah. as an artist, I don't, I don't really want to be an instrumentalist though. Mm -hmm. But we that's not to say that I would be doing the singing. I would still call you and other people to do the uh, singing. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm available. I would love to. I was on your first record. And, you know, I was honored that you asked me to arrange vocals and produce vocals on that record and uh, tell me a bedtime story. I just, Killing. you killed I it. Love, oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I love the combination of you playing Kim Scott on flute, Phil Davis on keys, and I actually memorized his solo. Because I'm always trying to learn and trying to grow. <laughs> and I mean, just the combination of everybody there and what you did on that record and, and the entire project just totally blew my mind. Oh, thank so, you. Thank you. We're going to go to a quick commercial break, but we're going to come back and talk more with bass guitarist extraordinaire, Sean Michael Ray. We'll be right back on The Tracy Hamlin Show. <laughs>
Are you a jazz lover? If so, have we got something special for you. Presenting Tracy Hamlin's Sweet Jazz Concerts. The first concert of 2022 is Sunday, May 1st, with saxophonist Paula Atherton and the songstress herself, Tracy Hamlin, at the River Creek Country Club in Leesburg, Virginia. Sunday, May 1st at 4 p.m. For more information and tickets, visit www.sweetjazzconcerts.com. Sponsored by the Bank of Clark. tempo is so you know so important and and sort of on point because there's a tempo to everything that we do in the Caribbean you know what I'm saying it's a, it's a hard beat we have our whole channel man the Caribbean is so diverse and for them to recognize that and to launch a channel for that that is totally amazing you start I started to think about all of that and I was like wow I said well wait a minute these are all the things that make great television. Hey everybody, it's Tracy Hamlin reminding you to join us every Monday night for an entire hour. We are chatting it up with some amazingly phenomenal recording artists that you need to know about, as well as some incredible and inspiring small business owners from my area that you need to know about. So join us for an entire hour every Monday night. Leave a comment on my social media. Let me know who you've enjoyed and who we need to have on the Tracy Hamlin Show. See you on Mondays and Ooches of Scooches. show we're here with bassist extraordinaire sean michael ray so sean hey hey you hey. have some amazing bases they're just beautiful i know i've seen lime green <laughs> i've seen blue i've seen white how many bases do you have uh well actually i'm endorsing a new company out of indonesia called fad f-a-d mm -hmm. and that's kind of a weird story the way that came about mm -hmm. um i got into one of my little youtube rabbit holes went down a rabbit hole looking at their instruments and found them on instagram and i asked the guys did they have any uh current u.s endorses and they said nope we don't have any endorses in the u.s mm. and i said well i would love to be your first <laughs> and from that point on we developed a little dialogue and uh -huh. and uh i am the only u.s endorsee of these bases amazing so I it's been a blessing to uh and i have a signature model as well so that that's a first for me so uh it's been a real big blessing to be able to play those instruments so explain to the viewers what it means to in you know to be an endorsee of fad and having a signature base uh just a really a back scratching situation 
Mm -hmm. Um, The manufacturer will a lot of times either give you an artist discount or they may give you the instruments for free. Mm -hmm. And in return, you give um, their brand and the instruments all of the... um, the I mean you you post it on your website and you do videos you give it the exposure mm-hmm. um, in return so it's just really a back scratching situation mm-hmm. and it can it can like I said it can be uh, where they give you the instrument for fee for free mm-hmm. or it can be an artist discount one or the other mm-hmm. or both so, or both so with all of the bases that you have I know when I see guitar players based on the song they may switch instruments. Do you use the same bass for an entire show or do you switch out too with all the different basses that you have? It depends on what I'm doing. Like I played a show this weekend mm-hmm. where we were doing like a tribute to like um, artists like the Dell Phonics and the Stylistics and like all of these old Philly international artists. So I was playing my four string P bass. Mm-hmm. But then in the middle of that, in the middle of that show, we did remember the time and I Michael want to buy Keith Sweat. So I switch bases oh. <laughs> for a more modern sound. So it, it depends on what I'm playing. So when you're traveling for gigs, do you generally take two or is it just one when you're traveling? or is uh, it just- Generally one, but I do have double gig bags, so I can take two bases if I needed to. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just depends on what, what the music is calling for. Uh, okay. My signature bass is a fretless model. And that just, the signature bass just means the model is a Shawn Michael Ray model. So if anybody wanted to buy that bass, it would actually be the Shawn Michael Ray model bass that they ordered. And it's made to my specifications. Um, you see, love that. That's fancy. Yeah, Shawn yeah. Michael, congratulations. That oh, is thank really you, thank awesome. You. Yeah, that was a long time coming. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh my goodness, congratulations. That is really wonderful. You. So you said that you have new music coming. When do you anticipate? Do you have an idea as to when it'll be ready? Um, hopefully, you know, by the fall. I think by the fall would be a reasonable uh, finish date. Mm-hmm. And, but- and, and I already have a song ready for you too. <laughs> I'm ready. You know, I, I stay already like you, so you can call me. So if you were not a recording artist, what would you be doing? Uh, what I studied in college was journalism. So mm-hmm. I still I still think I'm the, the poor man Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still, you know, am fascinated about that world, journalism, broadcasting, that whole kind of thing. So well, uh, what you're doing right now? <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm sure we have room for you here. Our TV network. Thank you. Hello. So, but Stephen A. Smith, he is always on 15. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. He's a little more passionate about sports than he probably should be, but yeah. I get it. <laughs> so for your first two albums, how much did you write on those projects? Um, yeah, them? I wrote, um, uh, maybe on the first, uh, maybe there's 13 songs on that first record. I probably wrote six songs on there. Mm-hmm. And uh, on this new one, probably there's about eight songs on there. So I probably wrote about three songs on that one. Cool. So where do you get your inspiration from to write? Uh, I don't know. That's a great question. It's just probably just from everyday life. Um, yeah. Something will inspire me, especially when you write an instrumental music, you know, that could come from anywhere. Um, if it's something lyrically going on in a song, it's probably going to come from something that I lived mm-hmm. or something that I experienced, whether that yeah. be good or bad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it sounds so cliche, so cliche when people are like, so how are you different from everybody else? But I really feel like <laughs> it makes us different is that we are writing and and performing from our experiences. Exactly. And, you know, my experiences is different. They're different from your experiences. So you're hearing my journey. You're hearing my pain. You're hearing my celebrations when you hear me sing when I'm writing these songs. And I think, you know, I think that is what makes the music so magical and so great. I couldn't agree with you more. Mm-hmm. So do you have a favorite song? 
Wow. I mean, yeah, you play, I mean, you've played with so many folks. <laughs> you, you, mean, know. you mean like a favorite song of all time? Of all time. Oh man, that's tough. It would it would probably definitely come between the library of Earth, Wind, and Fire or Gene Ovanelli. I, that's probably I the music that was like yeah. like I just want to stop by Gino Vanelli. <sighs> yeah, that that has the rank in my top three for sure. Mine too. That song makes me cry, and I can't tell you why. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's Gino emotional. <laughs> And now Earth, Wind & Fire, you know, they are a group that I always say, why are they recording new music? Nobody needs <laughs> They have such an incredible catalog that when I go to hear them, for, you know, go to their concerts, I want to hear the old stuff. I yeah, just... I, I always okay. think that's a weird conundrum for groups like Earth, Wind & Fire and Mays featuring Frankie Beverly's like... Like, you can't do any new music at your concerts. Nobody wants to hear new music. <laughs> well, Frankie yeah. Beverly and Mays have proved it. I mean, when was the last time they had new music? 35 years ago? People <laughs> right. just didn't hear their old stuff. They don't want to hear the new stuff because the old stuff, I mean, when you listen to old Frankie and Earth, Wind & Fire, every song, there is a different memory, whether exactly. it's good or bad, attached to it. And it's, it's all just feel-good music. So, yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to somebody that's trying to get into the music business? Uh, probably the best time ever to get into the music business, because when I was growing up, everybody was always like, man, we got to get a record deal, man. What do we need to do to get a record deal? Right. Well, with the advent of social media and YouTube and mm -hmm. Hey man, you can put the record out and build your own audience, uh, grassroots, you, know, you can make, you can just about make it happen on your own now. So can and that that's very very true. Um, any nuggets of inspiration to share with any aspiring artists out there? Uh, yeah, just follow your passion. I mean, I I wouldn't want to see anybody get into music because you want to get girls or you want to get money or mm -hmm. you no, know, you want to get involved in any kind of art because you have a passion for it. Mm -hmm. And I think those of us, like I look at you and, you know, our good friend, Eric Essex, who has about what, he's getting ready to release like maybe his 28th record. Yes. The reason that he can do this and you can do it for so long is because you didn't have any superficial ideals about getting into the music business. You just okay. genuinely love making music. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people that have interest in music in the music business should feel. You should be in love with the art of making music and all the accolades will follow that. And that is that is what that is the beauty of Sean Michael Ray. And that is why the, what I love about everything you do. I see oh, and feel you, and hear your passion. So thank you so much for joining us today. It means so it's much. My pleasure. Came on board to share your story, and I wish you much much success. Looking forward to working with you on your next record. For sure. Thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us today. This is Dorothy Marie Hamlin's baby girl, Tracy Hamlin, signing <laughs> off. See you next week and ooches of smooches. Bye, everybody. Thanks again, Sean. Thank you. I used to watch BET, MTV, VH1. Now I watch Tempo. Soca, Calypso, Reggae, Dance Hall. Don't star, better get tuned in to the Tempo. Don't have cable, they got an app. Go to your app store, download that. Whether it's tourism, cuisine, or the social scenes, if it ain't tempo, it's a wrap. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. It's the latest in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Who got the Caribbean views? Tempo. It's the latest in Caribbean news. Tempo. You trying to cook Caribbean food? Tempo. You know they got the music videos too. Tempo. Are you a jazz lover? 
If so, have we got something special for you. Presenting Tracy Hamlin's Sweet Jazz Concert. The first concert of 2022 is Sunday, May 1st, with saxophonist Paula Atherton and the songstress herself, Tracy Hamlin, at the River Creek Country Club in Leesburg, Virginia. Sunday, May 1st at 4 p.m. For more information and tickets, visit www.sweetjazzconcerts.com. Sponsored by the Bank of Clark. Are you ready?